These days, a bunch of people are getting into investing, and candlestick charts are a key tool for tracking a market. So today we're going to be making them in Python. So as part of today's agenda, first of all, I'll briefly talk about what candlestick charts actually are and how people use them in the real world. Then I'll show you guys the type of API data that we're going to be getting in order to make the candlestick charts. Then in the demo, I'm going to first of all get the crypto data from the API, make a simple candlestick chart in Python, and then make some customizations because we always want to make it look good. All right, so first of all, what is a candlestick chart? Well, essentially, a candlestick chart is a really easy way to read how stock prices have changed over a period of time. So they look something like this or this in many different websites. So each little line here, it's called a candlestick. And most of the time, each candle represents one day, although you could change that. They're widely used in technical analysis to visualize price movements over a given period of time, just to see how the stock market or crypto market is behaving. Now, they provide valuable insights into market sentiment, trends, and potential reversals. A candlestick is formed by four key elements, the open, close, high, and low prices. So here's what the body of a candlestick looks like. So this is like the whole chart, but each little candle or each day is represented by one candlestick. And this actually means something. So first of all, the rectangle part or the green part, that's called the body of the candlestick. And that's represented by the open price, which is the top part, and the closed price, which is the bottom part. So this would be the price of whenever the market opens, and this would be the price of whenever the market closes. Then these little thin lines extending from them, those are called the candle wicks. And they're represented by the high price and the low price. So in the day, the highest price that it ever went to would be the top of the wick. And then the lowest price that it ever went to would be the bottom of the wick. So yeah, that's each candle. And then when you put a bunch of candles together for a bunch of different time periods, then it'll make something like a candlestick chart. And you can really see whenever it's green, that means it increased. And whenever it's red, that means it decreased. So you can really see a bunch of different things from these candles. By examining the color, size, and position of these candlesticks, traders can gain insights into the market's behavior and make a bunch of decisions based on that. And many people do use these. All right, so now how are we going to make them? Well, in order to make these kind of candlestick charts in Python, you're going to need to have some data. And now today we're going to be using Yahoo Finance API. So APIs are application programming interfaces allow developers to get data and functionalities of other platforms or services. Now this one, the Yahoo Finance API, provides a wealth of financial data, including stock prices, historical data, and company information. In this case, we're going to be using the historical data in order to make our candlestick charts. Yeah, so now that you know a basic introduction of what candlestick charts are and the API we're getting the data from, let's actually get to coding these in Python so that we can create our own candlestick charts. All right, so first of all, I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code, which is my preferred editor. But you can really use any sort of code editor. And here I have a file called candlestickchart.py. This is where we're going to be this is where I'm going to be coding my Python file. All right, so step one, first of all, we have to import all of our required libraries, such as the API data and also Plotly, which is the library that we're going to be using in order to create the candlestick charts. So first of all, let me import our API data. Here I'm importing Yahoo Finance, and then I'm just gonna import it as YF so that I don't have to type it out each time. Then I'm going to import Plotly, which is our required library for making the charts. So here I'm just importing this graph object because we don't need all the stuff from Plotly's library. All we need is the graphing part. And I'm going to import it as Go so that I don't have to keep on saying graph OBJS. All right, so now that we've imported our modules, we can use all the functionalities from them into our code. So here, the first thing I'm going to do is fetch the crypto data using Yahoo Finance. So I'm going to make a variable called crypto underscore data. And for the value, I want to download the data from YF or Yahoo Finance. So I'm going to say YF, that's what we imported, dot download, which is a function that will download some data. And then in this case, we can really use any crypto we want. In this case, I'm going to use Bitcoin. And then we want to use the US dollars version. So Bitcoin USD. And then we need to get the start date and the end date. 
So in this case, let me do maybe like uh, just 2023. Let's do start equals and then 2023. 20, you have to put it in this uh, format. So year, month, and then day. So 2023, 01-01. So this will get January 1st, 2023. And then for the end date, uh, I'm going to do 2023, 06, and then 01. So let's just do till the start of June. So here, that gets most of this year, what we've covered so far. And it'll download all of that data into this crypto data variable. Now that we have the crypto data, let's create a candlestick chart based on this. So most of the times when you're using Plotly or whenever you're making a graph, you call it fig for figure. So I'm going to say fig equals go. Go is what we've imported as Plotly. So go dot, and then I'm going to create a figure, which in this case would be our candlestick chart. And then we need to provide a bunch of parameters. So here as the data, I'm going to say go dot candlestick because go is our Plotly and we want to make a candlestick chart. And then since that's a function, we need to provide all of these parameters. So just like we talked about earlier when I was talking about the parts of a candlestick, it had open, high, low, and close. Now we need to provide all of those for our candlestick chart as well. But first of all, for the x, that's just the data, we need crypto data, which is our variable, dot index. And then for the open, we need to index that out of our crypto data because our crypto data contains a bunch of columns such as open, high, low, close, all of that. So I'm going to say, so for the open, I'm going to say crypto data with an index of open. And then I'm going to copy this for the rest of them because they're kind of like that as well. For the high, again, we need crypto data with an index of high. And then I'll just do the same for the other ones. All right, so there we go. Now we've created a very simple candlestick chart. So now we've created a very simple candlestick chart, which will just show the basic data that we have. Now, if I ran this, it would create the chart, but it wouldn't display it. So how we can display it is by saying fig, which is our figure, dot show. And then now it should display our candlestick chart. So obviously this isn't going to look that good because this is just all of the default customizations, but we can make it look nice afterwards. So now let's just save this and run it. So to run this program, I'm going to go to terminal and you have to make sure you're in the same f directory as your file. In this case, I'm already in that directory, but the first thing we have to do is pip install all of our dependencies. But before that, I always like to make a virtual environment because that keeps all of your dependencies organized. So to create a virtual environment, it's different based on operating system, but for Mac, it's Python 3 minus M, VENV, and then whatever you want to call it. In this case, I'm going to call my virtual environment ENV. And then source ENV slash bin slash activate. Okay, now I'm inside of my virtual environment, and you can see that because it says ENV in parentheses here. So now that I'm in my virtual environment, I can pip install all of my dependencies. Now, creating a virtual environment is optional, but I just like to do it. So here, the first dependency I have to pip install is cufflinks. Now, this may be kind of random, but you... Oh, I forgot to say pip3 install. Cufflinks. Now, now, this may seem kind of random, but it's a needed dependency in order to work with Plotly. Because it's one of the sub-dependencies for Plotly. Okay, so now that's installed. I can install the rest of my dependencies. So the next one is Plotly and then Y Finance. All right, so, all right, there we go. So it's installed all of our dependencies. Now, if I run my program, it should create our figure or candlestick chart. So let me just, so let me run this by saying Python 3 candlestick charts or whatever you've named your file. All right, so if I hit enter, it should open it up on Google Chrome. All right, so now it should open up, yeah. Okay, so there we go. It's opened up our Plotly candlestick chart with all the correct data from the Yahoo Finance. So as you can see, I can even close up the data so it shows very accurately, but just a couple of days. And see, it even have, has the dates for each candle. So for example, this candlestick is May 28th, and you, it even shows you all the data. For example, see here. This is the open, it shows you the open, the high, low, and close. And 
it correctly formats that on the candle as well. So yeah, there we go. We've created a successful candlestick chart. But that's not all you can do with Plotly candlestick charts. You can also give it a bunch of formatting as well. Like for example, if I wanted to make this range slider, if I didn't want this anymore, I can take that out in the code. I can add my own custom titles and subtitles, things like that. Let's actually do some of those right now. So let me go back to my code here. And inside of, we've created this figure already, but if I say fig.update, then I can update a bunch of its characteristics. In this case, I want to update the layout. So the first thing I'm going to do, maybe let's add a title to this, because I'd really like to see a title. And then for the title, maybe let's call it Rishab's Bitcoin. Oh, actually, I have a apostrophe in that. Bitcoin candlestick chart. Okay, so now we've added a title. Now let's say we want to add a y-axis title so that we can have the price as the y-axis title. So let me say y-axis underscore title equals to and then price in USD. Then another thing, if you saw that range slider at the bottom of the screen, if I want to take that out, if I want to do it myself, then I can take that out as well. X axis underscore range slider obviously you don't have to do these if you don't want to i just want to show you guys what you can do and then if i say x axis range slider visible i can put that as a boolean value if i want it to be false then i can put it as false and then one last thing to make it false i would have to say x axis equal to dict and then we use the dict function and we say range slider equals and then we use that function again and then we're going to say visible equals false now this will make that range slider not visible so let's test this out again i'm just going to run the same program it should open up by itself yeah and as you can see at the bottom that range slider isn't visible anymore instead i can slide it on the actual screen here and if i select just a little bit it'll show me just that much if i double click it'll let me go out and again here at the top it has our title here and it even has the y-axis title above here, which we've customized it to do. So there we go. As you can see, there's a bunch of customizations you can do here. Let me actually add some more customizations as well, such as we can change the font, the background color, and even the template, because Plotly has its own templates. But first, let's change, how about the background color? Okay, so let's say plot, oh, plot underscore bg background color equal to and then you just have to put it as an rgb value so let's actually pick our own color here uh, let me pull out a color picker and then how about let's do like a greenish color let's do this kind of green and then i'm just going to copy the rgb value 0 1 30, 22 and then rgb that's a function here, and then I'll put our RGB value. So that should make the background color our greenish color. And let's actually do one more thing. Let's change the font. So I'm going to say font equals, and then dict function again. And then here I'm going to say the font family is... Uh, let me just copy a font family I have, because I don't really know all that many. So courier new monospace. And then let's change the font size as well. Let's say size is 15 and then the font color, let's make it, let's just keep it as black because the background's white, it'll look better like that. All right, so now if we save that and run it again, it should have our changes. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it doesn't look that good with the green, but I just wanted to show you guys that it's possible to make it green. So I've changed the background and as you can see, the, the size of the font and the font actually and the font family itself has changed. So let's actually make this background a little nicer. Let's pull up a color picker again. And then I want to make it like, maybe like a light teal kind of thing. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then let's go back here, change the RGB value, and then save it, run it again. And now it should change, yeah. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see, you can change the font so as you can see, you can change the background color, the
the font size, font family, all those kind of things. Now let's say we wanted to use one of Plotly's templates itself. I'm going to take out this plot BG color, and then instead I can use one of Plotly's pre-made templates, which will change all of these things. So I'm going to say template equals to, and then Plotly underscore dark. That will make it like a dark kind of theme. And then let's save that, run it, and yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it's filled up most of the screen here. There's The title, it's actually still there, but it's black, so we can actually change that. Let's do that. So instead of color for the font, we're going to make the color white here. So this will change the text, text color to be white so that we can see it in the dark theme. Personally, I really like this dark theme. It looks really cool. So let's run it again, and there we go. Now you can see all the text because it's white in color. And all the other functionalities are still the same. You can still zoom in, double click to zoom back out, all of those stuff. So yeah, there we go. There's a bunch of customizations you can do to make your candlestick chart look as good as it can. And let me remind you guys one more time that this data, it's coming straight from Yahoo Finance, meaning that all this data is real. Like, for example, March 12, 2023, this was the real price of Bitcoin. And you can do it for any other um, cryptocurrency. Actually, let's change that right now. Let's try to do ETH. So let's save that. I've just changed the download inside of the crypto data to Ethereum in US dollars. So that and then the same dates. So now it should change the data a little bit. Let's save that, run it. And as you can see, yeah, the data has changed. This is the Bitcoin one and this is the Ethereum one. So yeah, there we go. We've successfully created candlestick charts in Python, getting real data and displaying it in a nice UI. I'm really getting more and more into crypto these days, and I really like making these cryptocurrency type of videos. So if you'd like to see more crypto videos, stay tuned for more. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I'd love to help you out if you're stuck with any sort of candlestick charts questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.